Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas, the Carb Addiction Doc, and today we're going to give you our perspective on what I think is quite a controversial topic in terms of how it's handled. Everyone thinks they're an expert at this, everyone's kind of got this worked out, but maybe the truth isn't that simple. We're talking about kidney stones. Kidney stones. So, kidney stones are really crystals that precipitate out in the upper part of the kidney. So if you've got your kidney, there's a urine collecting system that concentrates the chemicals in your body for its soluble excretion. And sometimes if those crystals are at what we call a super saturated level in that urine, highly concentrated, then they precipitate out of that solution and form little crystals that then form stones. Anybody that's done a science experiment, an organic chemistry experiment at uh, high school or middle school, you've played around with those crystals and you've seen those crystals uh, um, happen. And we can measure those in the blood, especially the two commonest ones, which are oxalic acid crystals and uric acid crystals. So we understand that those are the two commonest crystals. Those are the ones I'm going to focus on. There are a few others. The question is, number one, how do they occur? And number two is, how do we get rid of them or reduce the risk of having those kidney stones? Because <clears throat> just to finish this up, folks, the, the danger of kidney stones is, number one, if they're massive and they slowly accumulate, there is a potential for, to, for them to damage the kidney itself just by their presence. But as long as the urine can get around them, they're there. Uh, they don't pose that much of a danger if they're just in the collecting tubules of the renal pelvis. However, sometimes little, little, little stones, they're almost like sand, can break down and travel down the ureter. And I've never had one. I don't think I'll ever get one. So I, I just thank the Lord that I am not in that 10 to 15% of people that get kidney stones. So I've never experienced the pain, but I've seen plenty of patients that have it. It is the most excruciating pain for men. <laughs> for women, it's akin to childbirth. Um, that's why men don't give, uh, give birth. Um, the point is, those little stones go down the ureter. They partially block the ureter. There's a lot of intense cramping, uh, sometimes trauma, bleeding, sometimes infection. Then the stones drop into the bladder and you pee them out and you can strain them out. So we can identify what type of stones they are. But quite frankly, you can test the urine, you can test the, um, uh, the blood and see if it's oxalic acid or uric acid. And they're usually combined to a cation like calcium, sometimes magnesium. The most common ones are calcium stones. So that's what we see. That's what we see at the stone level. Now, let's walk this backwards. There is so much misinformation. Because yes, these products, for example, oxalic acid, oxalates, occur in the food. They occur in our food. And they particularly occur in certain vegetable types of foods. Uric acid is actually very rich in fatty fish, in liver, in brains, in that kind of thing. So on one hand, we've got uric acid, uh, which is very high in a carnivorous, fatty carnivorous food, and we've got oxalates that are very high in certain vegetable foods like spinach and that kind of thing. And I know it's so simplistic to say, well, these things are in the food, and if you eat that food, it come out in your kidney. Right? Bullshit, folks, bullshit. If that was true, everybody that ate that way would have those stones, or the stone likelihood would be much higher in your vegetarian, your vegans. And they're not. So, deep breath, folks. Let's step back from the evangelists and let's look at the biology. There are large populations of people who are vegetarian. <coughs> there are large populations who eat a ton of herring, small fish, liver, the highly fatty um, protein-based uric acid, purine-based uric acid uh, consumption, and a lot who eat uh, oxalates different populations. But their rates of stones are no different than anybody else. Their rates of stones are no different than any other population. So it is not so simple that what we eat comes out in our urine. Yes, there is, of course, a percentage of that. But it's a very, very, very small fraction because the human body doesn't work that way. Fundamentally, here's what happens. Everything that we eat 
almost everything that we eat traffics through one vessel called the portal vein that runs between the gut and the liver. And the liver transforms almost everything that we consume, it packages, it transforms it. That's the liver's job. The liver is this incredible metabolic organ. So what comes out of the liver on the other side is not necessarily what goes in. A percentage, but certainly not an overwhelming percentage. However, what does come out of the liver is what the liver makes. And the liver is either very healthy or very unhealthy based on the percentage of things that we put in there. And one of the root issues is the substrates that we use, particularly when it comes to the macronutrients, sugar, protein, and fat. <coughs> and sugar and protein lie on one side because they typically traffic through glucose and fat traffics through ketones. And the human body is primarily designed to be in ketosis, to use fat as its primary fuel source. We'll remember that for a second. But when it comes to carbohydrates, sugars and starches and proteins, they are not the primary fuel source for the human body. And when the human body becomes protein or sugar dominant in terms of its primary fuel source, that's where bad things happen. Over time, we become insulin resistant, our lipid metabolism goes haywire, and the entire process by which the liver now is not providing healthy nutrition, but is trying to protect the body from the scourges of excess protein and excess carbohydrate consumption, particularly in an environment where there's low fat, that's where problems happen. And the problems are myriad, anywhere from obesity to diabetes, and the same is true with kidney stones. The same is true with kidney stones. So when we eat high concentrations of carbohydrates and high concentrations of lean protein, and we don't eat adequate fat, and we become glucogenic in our fuel system rather than ketogenic, that's when bad things happen. And in the liver in particular, the conversion of sugar and the, and the breakdown of protein to a fuel source rather than using protein as a nutrient, that's where the problems come. Because remember, the body can store some sugar as glycogen, the body can store a lot of fat, obviously as fat, but the human body has zero capacity to store amino acids. Our muscles are not storage, they're for something else. So the human body is not primarily designed to use protein as a fuel source. And when the body uses protein as a predominant fuel source because insulin resistance blocks the use of fat, that's where problems happen. And when the body's breaking down this excessive consumption of protein, the byproducts of that protein metabolism, particular types of protein, produce oxalates and produce uric acids from purines and from the metabolites of that protein breakdown for energy. And if you're a high protein eater or you eat a decent amount of protein and carbohydrates, that mixture causes the production of supersaturated urine in terms of oxalic acid and in terms of uh, uric acid. Between 60 and 80 percent, 60 and 80 percent of the oxalates that occur in the urine are produced internally from amino acids they did not come from our diet. Think about that, folks. So to blame our diet in terms of the eating of oxalates for all these problems, cutting out oxalates and everything, that demonizes something I call food. Yep, food. And then, not only do we demonize things that we shouldn't be demonizing, we're also not paying attention to the real cause of the problem. If you don't like spinach, don't eat it. But don't blame spinach for all the things that it's been blamed for. Okay, so another little thing, that piece of advice that people tell you. So they say, oh, don't eat, your, don't eat the purine, stay away from these foods. Those are some of the healthiest foods we can eat, especially because they're high in fat. And a high fat consumption, whether you're eating vegetables or you're eating animal products, the higher the fat content by percentage, 
not by quantity, but by percentage, the more you protect yourself from using protein as a fuel source. The more you are in ketosis, the more you're using the fat that you've eaten, but also using fat from your own fat cells as the, as the endless supply for your nutrients. So you don't have to use protein as a, as a substrate. And if you do that, and you're fat dominant and in fat adapted ketosis, where your fat, where your cells preferentially use fat as a fuel source, and your glucose uses basal. You're not breaking a ton of proteins down. You're not producing the oxalates. You're not producing the uric acid. And guess what? You get rid of gout. You get rid of kidney stones. Now there are a couple of quirky genetic reasons why people get kidney stones, but they're rare. They're rare. I'm not even going to talk about those. Okay, um, there is one other thing that we want to talk about as well, and that is the overconsumption of supernormal nutrients. Oh, my vitamin C is so important. Oh, I have to take magnesium for everything. Well, folks, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And while the uh, breakdown of ascorbic acid or vitamin C has been over focused on, there is definitely a, uh, um, an assigned blame to excessive amounts of vitamin C as it breaks down in the formation of kidney stones. It's not to blame for all of them, but there's definitely, if you supplement with a ton of vitamin C and the COVID era, everyone's panicked and they think taking more and more and more. Most of us don't live in Texas. More is not always better. Sorry for the Texans. I love you guys. Uh, but more is not always better. And the same thing, I've got to take my magnesium, I've got to... You're buying magnesium from someone who's trying to sell it to you, and most often, your magnesium is not the problem, it's salt. So if you're living in a low-sodium environment, because salt's so bad for you, and you're not consuming magnesium, you're setting yourself up for magnesium, magnesium oxalate, magnesium, uh, magnesium uric acid stones, magnesium calcium uh, uh, stones are happening because you are low on salt. You want to prevent kidney stones, number one, consume a decent amount of salt, sodium chloride. Number two, consume a decent amount of fat, be in nutritional ketosis. And then the other bit of really bad advice. Yep, I'm going to, I'm going to really fly against the uh, convention right here. The only species in the world, the only mammalian species in the world that pees dilute urine are humans. Because we way, way, way overconsume water. And when people have stones, they say, drink more water, drink more water, drink more water. Yes, it may dilute supersaturated urine. It may help with the pH of the urine. But urine is just a soluble waste system, folks. Human beings are very conservationistic when it comes to water because most places we've lived, we didn't have adequate water. So our body's not designed to be flooded with tons of water. And this enormous pressure to drink water, drink water, drink water comes from the carbohydrate dominant era because when you're burning carbohydrates, you have to have a lot of water. But if you're in fat adapted ketosis, ketones and fat don't like water, don't excessively drink. Your body knows exactly how much water to drink. Drink when you're thirsty. Drink for a mind as a mind cleansing moment. And I do not have kidney stones because I drink coffee. Because I'm in fat adapted nutritional ketosis. Coffee's so bad for you. No, it doesn't cause those problems. So the point about kidney stones is understand the biology. And if you're a sufferer of kidney stones, number one, get yourself into nutritional ketosis, fat-adapted ketosis. It may take a few months. And the best way to measure that is to measure your insulin and your C-peptide level, as well as your ketones. The second thing is don't overdrink water. You don't have to alkalinize your urine. Your body does that normally. When your pH is low in your urine, it's because you're doing something dysfunctionally wrong. And the third thing is consume a lot of salt. Consume a lot of salt. And you will get rid of gout. You will get rid of kidney stones. You'll put that into remission. I hope this makes you think, disagree with me all day long. But folks, it works. It works. It makes sense biologically, and it works. Take care. Pee out your stones if you wish.
but follow me on YouTube. If you can, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's one of the ways in which we get paid to make this content. Throw us a few dollars on Patreon. Follow my quips and my, my quirky little statements on Instagram and on Facebook. And if I've made you think I've done my job, take care.